Hey guys, today I'm going to be making onigiri, which is a Japanese dish that is commonly found in their bento, which is their lunchbox. It is a simplified version of sushi, which does not technically need any fillers, but today I may be using soy sauce. So the ingredients I will need for this are seaweed, Japanese style rice, it can't be long grain or any Indian style rice because that messes up the cooking process. I'm going to be using two cups of this rice. You need table salt, which you just need a little bit that can finely coat your hands. And I have my soy sauce filler. I'm going to be using just a regular standard rice cooker. It's not one of those special ones that uses induction heating or anything like that. So Japanese style rice tends to taste better if you wash it first. You don't want to rinse out all the starch, which is that white that you see inside of the water. You just want to rinse it enough, you know, two or three times quickly so that you get out all the pesticides or anything that could be in it. It's purely for hygiene, you know, it doesn't affect the cooking at all. Most people tend to, if you want a stickier or more moist rice, You'll let it soak for about 20 minutes before you actually cook it, but this doesn't really matter for what I'm going to be using it for today. There's no real perfect way to measure out how much water you need for how much rice you used. I used about 2 cups of water, so going by general guidelines, I would need to add 3 cups of water, which is an extra half cup of water per cup of rice. But, a general rule of thumb, would be just to make sure that your rice is nice and level. Gently place your finger into the water, just barely touching the rice. And if the water goes to about the first segment of your finger, index finger, mind you, then that rice, the water level is high enough for the rice to cook. Make sure the container that holds the rice is nice and dry so that none of the internal components of the rice cooker burn. Then, So here we have the final three stages of the cooking process. The first is the portioned out rice. Sizes of the rice balls may vary, but for this demonstration we used about three to four ounces of rice. The second is a compacted version of the same amount of rice. It's compacted so that the rice sticks together better and the final product is more sturdy. And the third is the final product itself. This can be decorated in any way, shape, or form that you desire. This is the more traditional way, just a triangle with seaweed. It can have fillings inside of it, but for this demonstration, it is just plain salt, rice, and seaweed. Now to prepare the rice balls. Take a spray bottle and apply a generous amount of water to one hand and then rub your hands together to transfer that water onto the other on a clean surface like a, the cutting board we have here. Apply salt to the clean surface and then pat some onto your hands, not getting too much but not too little. Next, take the rice that you decided to make into your rice ball and compact it into a firmer, smaller ball like here. After you have a nice firm ball, gently flatten it a little bit, and then you can begin forming whatever shapes you prefer. For this, I'm going to make a triangle. So I start by patting down each end, and slowly forming my points, flattening down whatever bulges may build up in the rice, compacting it where needed. Then you simply touch it to the seaweed and flatten it however you'd like. And that looks kind of ugly, but yeah, it works. This process can be repeated as many times as desired. The final product you see here is a set of three onigiri and a side of soy sauce for dipping.